and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today I have Janet Jackson with me, who has been a guest instructor on my show before, and I brought her back again with a wonderful Wilson Bickford original painting. Um, we will be doing this painting in acrylic paint, Grumbacher acrylic paint, which also Janet is certified by Grumbacher. Um, I want to tell you a little, about, a little bit about her credentials. She is one stroke certified by me when I was a, a one stroke certifying director and she's also a Wilson Bickford certified instructor. So we will be doing this lovely painting today and I'm going to learn this painting from her so I'm excited for her to teach me. So we switch from me being her instructor in the past to her being my instructor today. So here's Janet and we're just going to jump right in and get started. Okay, thanks Lucy. As Lucy said, this is a Wilson Bickford painting, and Wilson Bickford paints in oils. But since I teach at Michael's and Tom's River, and at Michael's you're not allowed to use oils because of, of the fumes, what I have to do is take a lot of his paintings and change them to uh, acrylics, and that's what I did with this one. What we're going to do is start with the uh, piece of chalk to do the horizon line. Now since the uh, gate and the fence of this painting, which is called the North Gate. Since they're really the focal point of it, we want to make sure that the horizon line is down a little bit lower than it might normally be. So what I do is I use a piece of orange chalk. And using the orange chalk, I draw the line on the canvas. Alrighty. OK? Now, I want to show you that using orange chalk is easily erasable. It's the easiest chalk to erase. I normally use one of these microfiber towels, and you can just erase it, okay? Because to me, that line was still a little too high, okay? So yours is probably in the right place. I'm going to okay. bring mine down a little bit. I did it with a little bit of a slope. I didn't make it really straight, okay? But just a little bit of the slope, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm using a uh, landscape. Today, that's fine and you're too. using a portrait. So that's, our, our that's 16 by fine. 20 canvases are two different ways. Here. Right. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is that when we paint, we normally paint from back to front. Not always, but in this case, we're going to do that. And the first thing we're going to paint is the sky. And the sky, I'm using ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, and a little bit of black. Now, the reason I'm using black is because ultramarine blue has a very purple tint to it. And what will happen if, if you put uh, ultramarine blue and white together, it may get very purple. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is pulling out some blue okay. and pulling out some white. And you see how purple that looks. Now, I know you like purple. I love purple. But I'm not crazy about it. So <laughs> I'm just using a titch of the black, a titch. If you use too much, it'll really gray it down too much. Now, see, that made mine too gray. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm doing is pulling out some more blue. And I did the same thing. And some did. more white. <laughs> so okay. can I just move my blue over to my pile of gray then? Of course, yeah. So I just pull I it out just, like that. Oh, so, okay, I see. So right. I, I moved mine over to the right. white, so I could just move it The over. problem is that a lot of people, when they're new and they start painting, they dump all the white and they dump all the blue together and make a big, giant pile of paint <laughs> and then hate it and then basically have to throw it out because you'd, you'd be going mm -hmm. on forever, okay? So I have the color that I want there. So it's like a gray blue. A gray blue, okay. yeah. And you keep playing with it until you like it. It's your painting, you okay. know, make it the color you want, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is start at the top of the canvas and I'm going to use X strokes, which are blending strokes, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down from there to the orange line, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you find that your uh, paint isn't moving the way you want it to, what you can do is go into your water bucket with your brush, okay? Put it on your towel so it's not dripping all over you, mm -hmm. and just keep on moving it. Okay. I would suggest also that you can use some white because you don't want this to look like a painted wall. You want to have some gradation of color in it, Okay. all right? And you can see, too, that because my canvas is so dry, I'm doing a lot of scrubbing as opposed to the X strokes right, because it's right. not taking it as well as it should. Right. And I can see, I was, I forgot already that you said to do X strokes, and I've been going back and forth yeah. instead of the X stroke. But I can see that since my canvas is not as dry as yours, I, I, either way was working fine. Okay. Good. All right, I'm almost done. How are you doing? Yep, just about okay. done. You All can right, go on. Next, I will catch up. Okay, the next step in the process 
moving from the back to the front is to do the clouds. Now, the clouds, you're not going to use a stark white to start with on the clouds. What you're going to do is mix some white and some blue together so that you have a shadow of the cloud, all right? Not the white, stark white of the cloud. You don't want to do the stark white because if you do that, then you have no place to go to highlight it. You're, mm -hmm. you're stuck. You, that's, that's it, all right? So you can make a cloud with any kind of brush. You can make it with a one inch texture brush. You can make it with a fan brush. You can make it with a flat brush. Mm -hmm. You can make it with a sponge. What I really like making the clouds with is a filbert brush. Mm -hmm. And a filbert brush is no more than a flat brush that has a rounded top. So what I'm doing is using this fan br um, uh, filbert okay. brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a number 12. Okay. And what I'm doing is mixing some of the white and some of the blue together to make a shadow. And it's really light blue. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pale, pale, pale blue. Right. Very good. And then, using an overhand grip, what I'm doing is taking this brush and just scrubbing into the canvas. Scrubbing into the canvas mm -hmm. to do some of the clouds, the shadow of the clouds. Okay. Okay. So it's a pale blue shadow we're starting right. with. Okay. Now, as we said before, there's a lot of tree going on here. Mm -hmm. So you might say, well, why would I want to put a cloud under the tree? Well, maybe you don't want to. Mm -hmm. But I just love doing clouds. When I first started doing clouds, I really hated it because I couldn't figure out how to do them. But as you practice, you will find that clouds are really fun to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to practice, even though there's a tree there, you mm -hmm. may want to put some clouds under there. And there's always a chance that um, a little bit of that cloud might peek through. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's important when you do clouds is, first of all, when you go to the canvas, make sure that you don't have too much paint on the brush. I find that some of my students, that's the biggest problem that they have, that they go up to the canvas with much too much paint. It's always easier to put more paint on later than it is to take paint off. Mm -hmm. So don't go on with too much paint. Okay. And we can just put some clouds wherever, right? Yep. Just random yep. here and there. Also, when you're scrubbed, don't stay in the same place. Make them very generic looking. Have some that are high, some that come out further. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's and we're doing good. a. That's good. I like to now. do the uneven amount. Usually, when you do um, an even amount, your eye seems to group the two of everything together. And that's why it's always said it's better to do an uneven amount. So when the viewer is looking at the painting, your eye doesn't group things together. Okay. So I'm going to put a couple more then. Now, remember I said we work from back to front all the time when you paint. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a blue sky. The sun is probably the next thing we'd want to do. Mm -hmm. If we took our dauber and put that yellow sun in there with the wet blue behind it, that sun would turn green. Right. So we're not about to do that. What okay. we're going to do is wait until this back dries, and we're going to go on with some other stuff. OK. okay? Yep. All right. You know what I want to do, too, so it can dry, is what we're going to do is the bottom part of the canvas. I want to paint that in black, okay. because you can see that that black is the base for all of the, the uh, mm -hmm. field that I have down there. Okay. So just use, you can use any brush you want, but I my texture brushes. Um, dirty right now, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to dry it off on the towel. Okay. Take some black and put a little bit of blue in it. The reason I'm saying that is because artists never usually take black right out of the tube because it's too dulling. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is putting a little bit of the ultramarine blue in there. And then just paint this down here. Okay. okay. And, and these again, are the uh, Wilson Bickford. This, this brush is the Wilson yeah. Bickford texture brush. And again, if it's too dry, you're going to have to put it in some water. Um, we could have used a blending medium or a floating medium to get this done too, but I didn't realize that it wouldn't move as fast as mm -hmm. it should. Okay, All right. we're, get, we're getting there. Yeah, it's pretty good there. Yeah. I like the idea of adding a little bit of blue. It kind of yeah, yep. Can't really see how it changes. No, you it, can't. But it did. It did uh, but it will. Yeah. It so will. the lay of the land here could be like yeah. kind of any shape. Well, it's, it, what you're doing is you're painting 
from your orange line mm -hmm. down to the bottom of the canvas. Okay. okay. But I mean the top, like the horizon, it, it's okay if it's just a, there's no shape. You can just do mm -hmm. it any way you want, any just way on you an want. angle yep. going down. Yep, it's land. Right. Land. Okay. Okay. All right. So just paint that in. Alrighty. Now, after this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do that background tree. Now, that background tree is very indistinct. And what we should be painting it is in is Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray is a combination of black and blue with a little bit of white in it. I forgot the Payne's Gray today. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are just going to mix Payne's Gray on our own. Always good to be able to improvise a little bit. Yes, with the uh, primary colors of yellow, blue, and red, you actually can make any color in the um, color chart. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you mix them all together, it becomes brown. Yep, that's what we call mud. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so we got the bottom done, we got the sky done, we got the clouds done. The next thing we're going to do is the tree in the back. And what I need is a little more ultramarine blue. Do you have enough over there? Uh, yep, I have okay. some. Thank All right, you. so to make the Payne's Gray that I forgot, I'm going to mix a little bit of black and blue together. And I'm gonna pull it out the way I showed you before. I'm not gonna just make a big giant pile. I'm going to pull them out together. And this time, what I'm going to do is tap the bristles on your palette so it opens up the bristles, okay? The reason we want that to happen is because that gives more of a foliage look when we make our trees. Okay. All right, how are you doing over there? Okay, okay. I'm gonna do the white, I'm gonna start tapping. Right. So a little bit of All right. blue. Now take a look at your my painting okay. there. Mm -hmm. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start up here and I'm going to tap to make this tree, okay? Now, it's important that you don't keep your brush in the same direction all the time. What you wanna do is move your brush in different directions. And what they call this is a clock analogy. So what you're going to do, tap the brush out, break open the bristles. You're going to go 12, one, 11, two. That way, it'll make your mind remember that they're not supposed to be all straight up and down. Okay, what I'm doing is bring it almost halfway to the middle of the canvas. Oh. Okay. Much bigger than I have here. Okay. Well, I have I have the, the landscape the style this canvas. Way. So yes. Okay. Since so. mine is a, um, I have the landscape. Yeah. Right. Format going. Right. <laughs> I would have a lot more to get to the middle. So mine will look more like bushes. So I'm I won't go all the way over. That's all. All right. And we'll see how that comes out. All right. And here my canvas uh, hitting a little bit because I'm pushing a little bit hard. Okay, like that. All right, yours is a lot darker than mine. Well, is that okay? We, I can oh yeah, put because we didn't have the the right color, and I mix mine. I mean, you and I are mixing colors, but you know. Yep, we're kind of winging it, aren't we, Jan? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, normally, what we would do next is put the uh, trunks in. All right. And the trunks you would use a script liner. So the script liner, you know that when you use a script liner, you have to make sure it's quite filled with water. I'm using a lot of water and I'm using black and blue with a little bit of white to make a gray. All right. A light gray. And what I'm going to do is make some trunks in here. You can go from the top to the bottom. You can go from the bottom to the top. I don't know why I normally do from the bottom to the top. Mm -hmm. That needs a little more lightness in it. Okay. So now we're making a, a light gray. Yeah. And I okay. see mine is, uh, I'm mixing it. You can see I'm rolling the brush around, but right. uh, mine is a little too dark, I think. Okay. So I'm gonna take some white, move it over the edge here and lighten it up. I'm not gonna mix it in the whole pile, just mixing it over to the edge. Okay, we have to move along here. Alrighty. So the next thing we're going to do is the bush in the front of that gray tree. And we do that by doing some green. Again, green, smidge of blue, and pull them together. Don't make a big giant pile. Pull them <laughs> out. Put a little bit of black in there, a little bit at a time. 
tap it out like we did before to break okay. open the bristles and to evenly distribute the paint. And then we're going to make these bushes underneath or in front of that tree that we ah, had in the back. Okay. okay, so it should be a very dark Very green. dark because that's the base. Dark green. And remember okay. that when you show depth on a canvas, you need to have at least three different layers of paint. You need to have the base, you need to have the mid-tone, and then you need to have the highlight. Okay. okay. Mine's even a little too green. Oh, I think mine is too. All right. Okay. All righty. All right. Okay. I'm going to let that dry just a smidge, and what I'm going to do now is start on the uh, field, all right, okay. while that's drying. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is add, you still have the green in mm -hmm. your brush. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it, okay. again, pulling it out until you get a color that you like. Okay. Tap it open, all right, and I'm just going to come across with my brush held this way. Not up. this way, this way. Side, side to yeah. side, okay. And what I'm doing is just tapping. Make sure that you don't cover up all of your dorks. Oops. You have to, what's the matter? <laughs> you covered up all your dorks? I, I yeah. certainly am. <laughs> okay, you can't cover up all your dorks. I'm gonna take a little paint out. I think I got a little If you do, that yeah. means that you're going to lose the depth in the painting. Okay. Okay. So let me get back in there and see if I can. All right. So we're tapping. We're going right underneath this side yep. to the other side. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. There we go. I'm leaving okay. some of the dark that time. Yep. All right. Got a little crazy there for a minute. All right. Okay. Now I think what we're going to do next is we're going to do the tree and then we're going to do the fence and then if we have time what we'll do is we'll do the flowers in the bottom using the toothbrush okay okay yeah because we don't want to do the north gate and not have the gate in right so, yeah. okay <laughs> yes all right and i should be going about halfway all the way yeah, yeah. About right, halfway right. down? Yeah, if you take a look at that painting, yep, yep. you'll see. That's what it looks like yeah, about halfway. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's do the uh, the, uh, the tree now, okay? Okay. All right. Using the script liner, again, with the black and the blue and the white, what we're going to do is make the branches as a road map. Okay, mm -hmm. and what we're going to do is just bring them that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, bring some others this way. You can see that the tree is conceivably off of the canvas. It's mm -hmm. not, you don't have a big uh, brand, a trunk here. So you're taking them off of mm -hmm. the canvas. And these are a little darker. A little darker, yeah. Okay. There we go. You can see I need a little water, so rather than medium, we're just dipping back in the water. Right. Now these are a road map for where you're going to put your leaves, okay? Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. All right. You can go on. I'll catch up with okay. my, uh, I'm okay. not used to doing these um, uh, without the medium, so I have to right. get used to dipping more. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use your black and your green and your blue to make a really, really dark green like we did before on the grass. And you're just going to tap in some of your leaves. Okay. okay. It's almost a black, but that's good because we're going to put a mid-tone and we're going to put a highlight over top of that. All right, so we really do want that dark. Absolutely. Okay. And you never want to use up your darks because if you do, then you will lose the depth. Okay, so you said again, it is green and the black. And some blue. And some blue. Right. All right. And my, br my brush was pretty wet, so I can see that's moving okay. around pretty good. And tap the bristles open again. Right. And, oh, a little too much paint. Very good. Okay. Yeah, looks good so far. All right. 
There we go. All right, what I'm gonna do is go back to these trees over here while you're okay. doing those, because they sure. dried a little bit. And I'll catch up in a and minute. And I put the green and the yellow together okay. to make your mid-tone. And I'm just putting here and there, I'm putting some highlights on those trees, okay? Oh, okay. Making sure you don't use up all your darks. Now you washed out your brush? I did brush. not, you I didn't, didn't. No, not. okay. I didn't. So you, I'm gonna wipe mine a little, it feels a okay. little too wet, and then you just are going into the yellow and the green, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right, now we've gotta do, before our time runs out, we've got to do our gate and our fence, because okay. this is the north gate. Right. right. <laughs> okay, now actually what I did when I painted this at, in uh, Michael's is I had the, my students draw it out with a chalk. Uh -huh. But I think what we can do is probably just do it freehand with a script liner. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm doing is coming down a little bit below where the horizon line is. Okay. Okay. This one I didn't, but this is not the best one I've done. Okay. Okay, so I'm coming across with a little bit of black with a script liner. Okay, and just plain black and? Right, just black and blue. Black Always and blue. black and blue. Yeah, okay. Right, I'm making a short section, and then I'm making the gate bigger than I have on that painting. Okay. And you went right across your green I right did, here. I did, okay. all right. Let's now the see. whole trick to this is going to be the highlighting. This is just the basing, this is just the right. base coating. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you start putting the highlighting, the white and the grays on here, you will see how it livens up. Right now it just looks like a black line, mm -hmm. which it is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, so oh, just draw you, that out. You're good at that. You got that fence down. We'll see. Okay. Very good. And then we have a line that goes down here. You could, it'd probably be easier if you looked at the... Yeah, 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 and you know what, too? I'm going to make it, I have to go all the way across this one. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, make your gate nice and big. Yeah, it's going all the way across. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Good. All right, then you're going to, to highlight it, you're going to take some black and some white together to make a light gray. And in those spots where you know that the sun would be hitting, what you're going to do is put that highlight on the top. Now that's going to be your mid-tone. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, you're going to put a white. I see. So we got a mid-value gray, and then we're going to a highlight. Right. Okay. I'm just trying to get some lines in here, like you did, just to show it's going across. Right. Very good. I'm going to add a couple extra since my gate is so long. Very good. Yeah, it's just highlighting. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to make it stick out. If we had more time, you know, that would yeah. work better. Oh, that's okay. okay. We got that gate on there. Okay. Very good. All right. This sky is dry. So I'm going to take the dauber that I gave you one, right? Okay. Yep. And I'm going to put some yellow, but I have green in there too. I'm going to, well, I'm going to put some yellow on this because with this, we're going to make the sun. Now I know you know how to make the sun by uh, painting it. I don't. I'm not good at that. So <clears throat> what I do is load the dauber with paint, okay? If I feel there's too much paint on it, I wipe it off with a paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is just put it just about here. Now, okay. if that blue paint is still wet, my sun will be green. Yes. But it's not. So. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I think mine is okay, too. I'm okay. going to go get my dauber. And you're using uh, yellow. Just plain old yellow. Plain you old could put yellow. some white could in it if white. you wanted okay. to. Yeah, I think I'll try it a little white. Okay. All righty. All right. Now. All right, this is pretty dry. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in the other areas. This was the base. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to put the mid-tone. Okay. And then we're going to put the highlight. So you're going to put some yellow and some green together. I'm All going right. back to the big brush again. Yep. To our landscape And this brush. is nice and dry, so we're just going to make sure that you don't cover up all of your darks. And in certain spots, all you're going to do is put some mid-tone highlights. Mid-tone, OK. Mid-tone, OK? Yeah, mine's not real dry underneath, but. Oh. Well, That's okay. I'm just going to put some on and mud. see if I can get, yep, yeah. get a little on there. Yep. 
Okay. I'm just going over a little bit where we already bit. went. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. As long as you don't cover up your darks. How many right. times am I going to say I that? I know it. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> and I do it. Yeah. Even though you'll say it ten times, I'll still do it. I'm sure that's what happens when you have your students. <laughs> and the next color, I added a little yellow and white together. Okay. And I made it a little brighter. Okay. Especially out toward the ends of the, uh, the branches because that's where the sun is and conceivably they would be getting more light than right. the trees in the back. Okay. You can add a little white to that too, of course. Of course. <coughs> so we have about a couple minutes left, so let's see what else you can show us in the last okay. couple minutes. All right. Now, I mean, you can see at the bottom of this painting here, we did um, flowers. Flowers are made with a toothbrush. How many minutes do we have left? About two. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, when you use the toothbrush, what you do is you take the toothbrush, you put it in the water, and what you do is just make the toothbrush go around in circles in the paint that you're going to use. So you're going to use white. You're going around like this. Okay? Then what you do is you take the toothbrush and using your index finger and ver getting very close to the target, which in this case is the bottom <laughs> the of the target. canvas. I like you called it a target. What you do is just pull back. Okay. Now you can see this is working quite well. Mm -hmm. However, in some cases, if you have too much water in it, you'll get these big giant spots of uh, paint on your canvas, which is not so good. I would rather have little pinpricks like I'm having now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now what you can do too is you can use blues, reds, whatever. I saw you put some blue in that one, so then... I just, I just yeah. smidge. A so smidge. you just took this white brush, put it in a little blue, and yep. went over again, yep. right? Wonderful. I'm going to do that now. Okay. I think we have another second. I'm going to get a little blue, get it in there. I love the blue on top of that. Okay. All righty. So we have less than a minute left. Is there anything else in, in I addition I don't think here? so. I mean, uh, what you need to do is work on your, your fence, uh -huh. okay? And could put but, the other grasses. We could have put a little bit more grass. Highlight the grasses. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But at least I showed you the process that this gets done. It the looks whole wonderful. The whole uh, trick is the base, the um, mid-tone, and the highlight, mm -hmm. and not to cover mm -hmm. up your darks. And I would <laughs> just come back and get a couple of birds in there like oh, I saw yeah, that you right. did. Yep. So I'm just using the script liner again and dirty script liner and I'm gonna come in and just holding it like a pencil and there is a lazy V. We call it a lazy V because it's opened up more. A regular V is tight, lazy V is opened, okay? So here we go. I think once you put those birds on it makes everything else, you know, the depth of the painting, it's even even further, okay? Well, great job. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for oh, coming welcome. today and for teaching me this painting. You're welcome. And I think we're going to offer it to my students, too. Very good. Yes, very <laughs> Thank good. Thank you. Hope you come back again. I will. Thank you for Thank joining you. us.